video, I want to introduce you to PaperPal. And PaperPal is kind of an AI writing assistance for writing academic articles. And it is a bit different in what it is capable of doing and what it's meant to do than something like Jenny AI or Yomu AI. Whereas that's more meant to like use AI while you're writing, PaperPal is more meant in the beginning and the end of the process. So in the beginning of the process, it does have specific academic tools for helping you generate outlines or generate content, which I don't ever really suggest using uh, AI to just generate your content for you. And then it has really good tools in the editing aspect of editing your papers with AI. But using AI as you write or using AI to cite or even citations in general isn't really something you can do in PaperPal. So I'm gonna give you an introduction into it today to see um, what it is capable of doing. It does have a free version available. If you are interested in upgrading, um, you can actually get access to several different tools, including PaperPal with a researcher.life account. I will leave a discount code below to the annual plan of researcher.life so that if you're interested in getting access to a lot of different tools, and I'll have some of those tools on this channel as well in other videos. So this is PaperPal. In this document, you have several different things you can do. So a lot of the editing um, situations are over here to your right. There's language, there's synonyms. So if you're trying to find different synonyms for words, um, translation. So if you're translating it from another language into English or consistency checks. So again, this is a lot more on the editing side of it than generating content. They do have a co-pilot here, and with this, you can ask it to rewrite, but you can also ask it to generate. And so that's where I'm gonna start, and then I'm going to um, show you some of the editing features afterwards. So in this, you can ask it to actually generate like an abstract for you. Um, in this case, this is going to generate it based off of the information. So these, you already need to have something in your document to be able to generate your title, abstract, keyword, summary, study highlights. This can all be really helpful especially if you're struggling with figuring out which title you should use for your paper or developing an abstract, this can also be really helpful. The other things it can generate, which I actually think are really cool, is emailing the journal. So you can actually have it write a cover letter for you. I think that is something that a lot of people struggle with, how to write a cover letter to a journal. So if you're interested in how well it performs on the emailing, let me know and I will make a future video about that. Instead, we're gonna start with the outlines. So we're gonna say that we're starting with a research article. Once you click research article, you're gonna have a form here and you can just input different information about your field of study. So I'm gonna click the section I want it to start outlining is going to be the introduction. The field of study, I'm gonna put physical sciences and then I'm just gonna paste in here a description of my second published paper. So steroid isomer separation by eye mobility mass spectrometry using metal adduction in a mixture. And I'm gonna click generate. Once you click that, it's going to take you to a new page where it's going to start generating an outline for you. So here we have the background. It talks about what steroids are. It has the topic importance. I almost always put my topic importance above my background information. It usually makes a really nice segue. So I would at least switch those two out. The existing knowledge, so that moves into actual steroid analysis. How has it been done before? The knowledge gap is saying, why do we have this? Again, this is not an expert in the field, right? So it's just talking about the need for more effective ways. When in reality, I would actually bring in previous literature here and then go into, okay, what did that previous literature not include? This is way too broad. Like this is more topic importance than it really is the knowledge gap for this specific paper. Um, rationale is to use it um, in a mixture and then it has the research question, the aims and objective and the hypothesis. This is the like last four are just not exactly how I think most experienced writers would write an introduction. You do want to have a paragraph on the study that you're doing, but not very often do you go, this is my research question, this is my hypothesis, this is my rationale. Usually you give more of a summary of the big takeaways of the paper. What are they going to find if they keep reading the paper? 
I think this is just going to be incredibly repetitive, right? Like your research question and your hypothesis are going to be inverses of each other. And if you're interested in, on how to convert this to, I will leave a video in the description below um, about research questions and hypotheses. But overall, like, obviously this should be edited, right? Like you should be able to know your field better than an AI bot would. But if you're having troubles generating that general structure, this could be helpful. So you can regenerate. You can see down here, it does say AI content should always be reviewed. That is completely true. AI is able to give you kind of a starting point, but you should always take that in a different direction. So if we copy this, and I'm gonna paste it in here. So now this gives me the overall direction. I'm just gonna kind of delete out this whole section and I'm gonna put in summary of my study. Now background, I'm gonna move my topic importance up and then my background really nicely. So like I can talk about why steroids are important and then I can easily just segue into what steroids are. So I can remove my background. I'm gonna delete that space. And then here's my existing knowledge and here's my knowledge gap. Now what I would add in here is previous literature because I think that's gonna make it really nice to go into my knowledge gap. So this is gonna be how has ion mobility been used to separate steroid isomers. And then my kind of bullet points here, and this editor doesn't have the ability to add in bullet points, so I'm just gonna use an asterisk here. This is gonna be derivatization. And then we're gonna do metal adduction. And then here, my knowledge gap is, well, steroids have been separated in individual solutions. There has not been research into using ion mobility and metal adduction for separating isomers in a mixture. So we have topic importance, we have background into steroids, I would then expand this. And then we have my existing knowledge. Several methods um, have been developed for the analysis of steroids, including chromatography and mass spectrometry. I would then input the challenges with these methods. And then after that, I would introduce ion mobility spectrometry. And then I would have what is spectrometry. And then we have the previous literature. I'm going to again talk about derivatization. I again, I know this field, so I can just literally like put in um, different papers that I would bring up for each of these topics. And then metal adduction is going to be, there we go. And then I can just add in the summary of my study. So this is how I would outline it. Again, I think, obviously, I've had a lot of experience. I've written several papers, so it's a lot easier for me to go, oh, this is how I would outline it. If you're really struggling with this, I think using the outline generator in something like PaperPal can be really helpful. Now, another feature of PaperPal is the editing ability. So now that I have my outline, now it is not going to like help me generate like something like Jenny AI or Yomu AI would do, right? Um, this is more on the front end and the back end, like I've said before. So here's my thing. I do want to show you, instead of writing all of this out, I do want to show you um, some of the editing capabilities. So if you highlight over anything, so let's just highlight this here. You can click this, and this is the Copilot Assistance, and you have three different things that you can do within this. You can paraphrase, you can make academic, so if it doesn't sound very academic, you can make it more academic, and you can trim. So this is actually shortening it, making it a lot shorter. So if we paraphrase, you can see it shows over here. And I do like this feature, is that it doesn't just replace whatever you're writing. So you can hit Generate. And it's going to show you um, something similar. So this is steroids, a class. So it's moving this um, part here up into this sentence here um, are widely employed. So yeah, it's switching out the words a little bit. 
Their analysis and characterization are crucial for drug development and maintaining quality control. These compounds possess a wide range of biological and physio physiological effects in living organisms. So it took this part here and just kind of put it to the bottom. So it is rearranging. It is taking some of the phrases from the original and doing that. Now you can replace it. You can ask it to regenerate. Again, always check what's going on. You can always view the original text up here. So now let's try make academic. We're gonna go ahead and click generate there. So the use of steroids is prevalent in the pharmaceutical sector for addressing a variety of health conditions. Their analysis and characterization are crucial in drug development and ensuring product quality. Steroids are a class of organic compounds that occur naturally and they possess a broad range of biological and physiological effects on living organisms. So we do see a few kind of more word changes. So in the use of steroids versus steroids are widely used. I would go with steroids are widely used. I think the use of steroids is a little awkward there. Are of great importance to are crucial. I like the are crucial is a little bit better there. So this is really just doing more um, word changes out or phrase changes instead of doing like an entire paraphrase where you're moving things around and things like that. And then finally, trim is going to make it, let me re-select this. Trim is gonna make it a lot smaller or uh, shorten it up. So you can do the expected word count. It's gonna do 39, let's see. So here it, it shortened it to 38 words. So steroids are commonly used in pharmaceuticals to treat various illnesses and their analysis and characterization are crucial for drug development and quality control. Steroids are organic compounds that naturally occur and have diverse physiological effects in living organisms. So it actually kept all of the sentiments of the original one, it just shortened it. So this would be really, really good to use whenever you're writing an abstract and have to meet a word count, or if you're writing a paper that also has a journal or you're submitting to a journal that also has a word count limit here. So those are the three different things that you can do with Copilot once you have written. The other things that you can do is using the editing features of PaperPal. So you can um, look at rephrasing and word choices. So you can see this here is rephrasing this. The pharmaceutical industry to treat various diseases instead of using for the treatment of. I like that. So I would do accept all um, to make that a little bit simpler article usage here. So how has IMAbility been used to separate the steroid isomers? I don't like that. Um, steroid isomers doesn't need an article in front of it. It's a very odd um, way to include it. They are fixing my et al because I always include periods in the wrong places. And then they're doing this. So preposition uses and spelling because I was writing this um, fairly quickly. Uh, so I can just accept all of those and now it's editing it. So it does kind of is a little bit better of an editor, I find, than something like Grammarly or something like um, Word in general for academic writing because we do use kind of odd language for Word. You can also come down here to the settings and switch to British English. So if you are working in British English instead of American English, you can go ahead and switch that and it will change based off that. You can also look at synonyms. So if you highlight a word, it will suggest academic synonyms for you. So let's look at various. I think that's an interesting one. So we're gonna look at synonyms for various. So a variety, several, and different are the different ones it uses. It is showing that the most common of that is various in academic text. So this is what this percentage is. How commonly are they published in the scientific literature? If we look at a wide range, I'm gonna do that since it's very similar. So let's just do range. You have to look up one word at a time. Yeah, there we go. So wide range of is 68%. That's what we're already including. This is already giving really high, similar to what is typically published in the literature. Let me go to something that I wrote and it didn't actually generate. Um, so let's do separating. Curious, what do I would show for that? So separating isomers, differentiating isomers um, for several isomers. So differentiating isomers is the highest that makes sense. Um, we just tend to use separating because we're in separation science. So it wouldn't know that, but it does look like it's recognizing we do use differentiating isomers a lot too. So if I click that, it's going to 
put that in. And that's one way to like specifically look at individual points to make it sound a little bit more academic. If we come here, you can translate it. This is obviously already in English. So I'm not worried about that. And then consistency, this says no consistency issues found, but if like me, I have a really hard time not changing tenses as I'm writing, this is a place that I could fix all of that in one go instead of constantly looking for it. So overall, that's a little bit of an introduction into how to use Paper Pal. Um, again, this is one of the softwares that is available in our researcher.life membership. Um, so I will leave a discount code to that down below and the link to the researcher.life and to Paper Pal specifically down below. Don't forget, if you are struggling in figuring out how to write your research papers and even with using something like Paper Pal or you don't want to use something like Paper Pal, you can always download my scientific research paper checklist down in the description below. It's completely free. It's a PDF that walks you through how to actually generate the outline and write your research article. I hope this video was helpful and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.